Springfield Armory Emissary, 1911, in all black. Let's check it out. Springfield Armory was founded in 1974, and they're known for their 1911s. A close competitor with Colt early on, and then to me, they transcended into just many models, a lot of variations. Their custom shop is just excellent. Uh, they're making some of the best high quality production 1911s on the market. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the Emissary. This is a 1911. It's got the 4.25 inch barrel, which is about the commander length. This has some features that are totally different. In fact, out of Springfield Armory's line, this is the most unique 1911 that they offer. Their first model of the Emissary was a two-tone with a stainless steel frame and a blued slide. Now they're offering the Emissary all black. The Emissary has more custom features and yet it's still made as a combat or self-defense handgun. With the all forged slide and barrel, the quality is top notch. And a big thank you to Springfield Armory for sending the Emissary 1911 all black for this review. Guys, when it comes to the Springfield Armory line, uh, the Emissary definitely stands out. Uh, it's totally different than any of the other 1911s. I mean, there's some good quality between the TPR, Total Response Pistol, with their operator, uh, with their uh, Garrison, which is actually one of my favorites because it's so plain. Uh, I'm a little bit of a traditionalist typically with 1911s, except I really like the Beaver Tail Commander Style Hammer. I like that. And it's just a very clean, slim handgun. But when it comes to the Emissary, uh, it kind of walks outside the box. There are some things about it that really set it apart out of all the other 1911s out of Springfield Armory. So before we get started, let's go ahead and drop our eight round magazine for a 45. It comes with two magazines, chambers empty. And then when it comes to the standard Emissary, this one is nine millimeter uh, and it holds 10 rounds. Uh, it, this one does come in 45 as well and it's the four and a quarter inch barrel and it's empty. So with the new Emissary, this is just the all black. Uh, they wanted to do a black finish. Uh, this one has a blued, hot salt bluing finish on the slide, stainless steel frame, gets that two-tone look. It's, it's beautiful. But with the new Emissary all black, it's just all black. <laughs> the only thing that's different are the sights. That's the only color you're gonna get and it has the U-notch sights which they use those on the Hellcat and some of the Springfield XD type series pistols. That is a really cool sight system. We'll look at it a little closer in a minute. It does come with the rail model and it comes without the rail. Uh, but with a four and a quarter inch barrel, you don't have the option for a rail. Uh, but here we do. And it gives it a full shroud all the way out, which makes this just look almost like something in sci-fi. I mean, it definitely has just more of an unusual look to it. And I just love how it's just cut off. It's got a large front shroud. That's gonna help with felt recoil. It's gonna give you a little bit more weight toward the end. And this one has just a really nice Cerakote finish, but look at the detail. I mean, even the engraving, very well done. I mean, the finish is beautiful. And then even the G10 scales are black. Now these are VZ G10 scales, has the grenade pattern. Uh, here you can see we've got the grenade pattern in kind of a green color. But this, around the front, you have that same texturing at the front strap and the mainspring housing. This gives you an incredible solid grip. 
Uh, in fact, when you're holding it, it's just, you know, it's solid in your hand. It doesn't twist, it doesn't move, it stays put. And to be honest, we shot this quite a bit. Uh, it was not uncomfortable. Now, as you can see, I've got my thumb up here on the safety, and this is your uh, frame safety. It's extended, it's only on one side, and this gives you just a place to put your thumb to help maintain recoil, bring both thumbs forward, and it shoots really well. You can see those U-notch sights. I mean, they are really awesome. They're so easy to pick up. But one of the big things about the Emissary is the tri-top slide, and that's really what changes the total appearance of this handgun. And as you can see, there's slats cut all the way down. And then there's the top strap, which has serrations. I mean, they are beautifully done right into the metal. This really helps take down glare. But the cuts on the side also eliminate a lot of the glare, and the serrations are going forward. And so all the cuts are forward. You have these serrations on the top, and then you have that beautiful new notch. I mean, look at that. It just really shows up. The front bead is actually a tritium bead with a luminescent circle around it. So it's super easy to see day or night conditions. And that rear sight just has a U. And it has a cocking shelf right here for one-handed reloads, which for me, for a combat handgun or self-defense handgun, this is mandatory. We have our commander hammer. It is skeletonized or even a delta type hammer. Beaver tail is high ride. It's beautiful. It has a memory notch right here. But the grip safety has been around since the beginning in 1911. It was part of the requirements for the U.S. military. I mean, guys, the 1911, I mean, there's a lot of things that have been upgraded, but the 1911 in its original form has been around since 1911. And like I say on all my 1911 reviews, they are as popular as they ever have been. Why is that? Well, first off, they're very thin. This has some super thin grips. A lot of the standard 1911s have a little bit thicker grip. Gives you maybe a little more if you like that. For me personally, because the grip is long this way, I really like that thin grip. It allows you to get a full solid grip on the handgun. And if you wanna add thicker grips, you can because this is the basic 1911 grip. We have a flat face trigger, but it is solid. There's no uh, skeletonized holes or anything, and so, but it's a really nice pull. We'll check that out in a minute. We have our slide stop right here with serrations, which is typical for your 1911, but we have this five slot Picatinny rail. It's gonna give you a lot of options, uh, a lot of lights, and what I like about it is that it'll bring it back, and it mates up really pretty close with the front of the slide. Here we have the TLR-1. Uh, this is from Streamlight. We have the PL-3 Valkyrie from Olight. We have the Surefire X300 Ultra. Here with the Streamlight, I really like these paddles. They're extended and they actually just protrude just a touch past the muzzle. But again, this is the four and a quarter inch barrel. Here we have the Surefire X300 Ultra. Really nice bright light. The paddles right here, they're very touchable, reachable. For your hand and it fits really close to the trigger guard. Here we have the PL3 Valkyrie from Olight and excellent light, fits really well. In fact it comes all the way back because the mount is actually adjustable. It's a quick adjustment and then once you tighten it down it locks it in. Rechargeable on the bottom. Uh, this is just an excellent light but all three of these are but as you can see they all fit very well. Now, Optics Planet gives a 7% discount using Suit00 when you go to their website, and that includes everything on the site, and we really appreciate Optics Planet for sending the, the Surefire and the Streamlight. And we really appreciate Olight for sending the PL3 Valkyrie. Now, with the original Emissary, uh, we do have the cuts that are just like your Colt 1911. Uh, with the all-black Emissary, it's just straight out. And so this is just going to give you more options here, but it just has that squared-off look. Speaking of, we have a squared off trigger guard as well. Standard serrated mag release, drops those mags out really well. Also, we have a bevel around the mag well. Now here with the Garrison, we have more of a traditional 1911 style to it. Uh, you can see the mainspring housing, and this is 40 lines per inch. This is a really nice mainspring housing. It is all steel, and then of course we have our grenade pattern on the back. But you can see this, these are both very grippable, but this just really tends to be a solid fit in the palm of your hand. Here on the front, a lot of 1911s are slick on the front. Uh, and, there, and of course, there are a number that have checkering. 
uh, with the garrison it's slick here we have our texturing and it's that grenade pattern texturing and of course we have very thin wood grips and diamond pattern uh, on the garrison uh, these are thinner than typical so this is going to give you again a lot of the same feel but not near as aggressive as with the emissary uh, this is just a very comfortable confident grip the Cerakote is a matte finish on the original Emissary. It is a hot salt bluing. It's beautiful. Uh, the only problem is it gets fingerprints, but you can easily wipe those off. Serrations are moving forward. They're deep enough to be able to really grab hold of and very solid. Then with the all black, same thing. No front cocking serrations. We do have some at the top, which give you a little bit in your hand to be able to bring that back for press checks. But overall, most of the features are on the all black or on the original, uh, but of course, obviously without the accessory rail. We also have a full length guide rod. And so we're gonna show you how to disassemble this in a minute. Uh, they even have the tool that comes to take it down. A bushingless bull barrel. Uh, this is a match barrel, but what I really love is this crown. It's just a really nice crown that protects the lands and grooves inside your muzzle. And you can see that little bit of a slope that comes down. And that makes a big difference to protect your accuracy. As far as slide to frame fit, it is rock solid. Uh, the barrel locks in to the slide. And of course, this is just hand fitted into this frame. Here at the back, there is no movement. As you can tell, the frame and the slide are fit extremely well. I mean, it is a very smooth glide all the way through and when you're firing it you can also feel that of course with the nine millimeter version it's got a less of a recoil spring and so again super smooth uh, and that's one of the things that especially when you're starting to get up into the higher tier springfield armory 1911s the fitting is exceptional the garrison has your standard 1911 serrations uh, we have novak style sights three dot we have a Delta hammer, just like before, and a lot of the same features. But the big thing is, when you look down the front of this one, it has a matte finish on top to keep glare down. But when you go to the emissary, it really is actively keeping that glare down. And that's really one of the reasons why this slide configuration is what it is. I mean, this is, again, a custom style 1911, and yet this is made for self-defense or for combat. Now, talking about safeties, uh, so we have a round in the chamber, we've loaded our gun, just bring the safety up. This is what is considered cocked and locked. It's the way I carry it, it's the way most self-defense experts in the U.S. would recommend because racking a round into the chamber during a self-defense altercation uh, can lead to being shot. But in Israel, they do this exact opposite. They leave a round out of the chamber. So here we have the safety up. We also have to depress the grip safety. So if I pull the trigger with the safety down, uh, we're still gonna have safe until I grip the grip safety and then the gun fires. So it's got redundant safeties to keep this safe. Good quality 1911s have an excellent reputation for some of the best triggers. And so as we have the hammer in the rear position, we have our take up, it's right there, it's very short. And then we hit it and it has a super clean break. Reset. right there, and then back at it. Guys, if you shoot a lot of 1911s, you're gonna get spoiled with the trigger. All right, we're gonna check the trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge. We have to depress the grip safety. Three pounds, 15.7 ounces. Three pounds, 13.7 ounces. Really consistent. Weight on the emissary, 4.25 inch railed model. 40.57 ounces. And we'll look at the more simple Garrison, 4.25 inch, 36.64 ounces. Big thank you to Fiocchi for sponsoring our ammo, all made in the USA, one of the biggest suppliers of ammunition in the country. Uh, and I'll tell you, these little loaders, even though this is just a single stack magazine, it works. Very versatile, very adaptable. Now if we can have the rain to stop, we'll be good. All right, we got the Emissary from Springfield Armory, all black. The one thing I love about the Emissary is that it is so thin. 
the grips are super thin the aggressive texturing both on the front and back strap it just feels really just nestles in your hand but this thing I mean it is just super smooth the slide to frame fit is excellent and then of course you have your accessory rail if you want to run any kind of accessories one thing I do love though too about uh, Springfield Armory in general is they're putting these U-notch sights with this front tritium bead that has a ring around it. This is super easy to pick up. Uh, they put them on the Hellcats, they put them on a lot of their 1911s. Serrations on the top, cut down on glare. Really flat, smooth. And I don't know what it is. I'm shooting 45, but with this shroud, and I've shot them with the shrouds. For some reason, this is a really soft shooting 45 ACP. And that's really what should be in a 1911. <laughs> you can feel that power, but yet you feel like you really have a good grip on it. Extended frame safety. Uh, the trigger is really good. I mean, even though it's just this, you know, not even skeletonized. So it kind of looks almost generic, but it's all black and that's really the way they wanted it. And baby, it's black. <laughs> I'll tell you, Springfield Armory, when it comes to their 1911s, Especially for a production 1911, these are fantastic pistols. Now for disassembly. We're going to drop our magazine, check to make sure the gun is empty. Uh, next, bring back your slide. And you're going to find this little notch. And I'm going to see if I can show you right there. It's the notch before the slide stop. And from the back, just push up and then you can pull your slide release or slide stop all the way out. Now let this come forward gently, keeping a finger on that recoil spring. Now there is a tool included in the box and it's this right here and it's to remove your full length guide rods. Take your recoil spring and compress it and you want to go all the way out. And once you're out, find the hole in the guide rod and slip your tool right in there, just like that and that holds that captive. Then you can just push this on out. Now there is a bushing right here that comes out with it, and now you've got this captured. Do not release this at this time. If you really want to do some maintenance, you can, but this is going to be a bear to get back together. Then we take our link pin, drop it, and then we just go forward, and we come right out the front of the barrel. Now that is a beefy barrel. <laughs> and so this bull barrel really helps to mate up to the slide, and it is a bushingless system and we have a really nice feed ramp. And that's all we need to do to field strip. Uh, we're gonna look at the interior, very well finished. Uh, there are some numbers here uh, that are matching all throughout, but Springfield Armory does a beautiful job on the inside and outside of their 1911s. And here we have the frame. And you've got these, this rail section that's pretty long, and that's one of the reasons why the slide to frame fit is so nice. It glides on these rails. Whereas with your polymer striker fire pistols, they have just a little section here and here. Uh, and it works really well, but this just gives you a lot smoother feel to the action. For reassembly, we're going in reverse order. We make sure we take our link pin, put it forward, and go right into the, the slide. Next, we're going to take our recoil spring and guide rod, and we're just going to push it through. And you want to go ahead and get that bushing all the way up, just like that. Next, just give it a little bit of a push and pull your tool out and slowly bring back your recoil spring. It is under tension. Uh, it can be a little sore on your thumbs. There we go. We had our link pin stuck in the way. Now we're going to take and put our slide over our frame. And again, we're going to find that little notch right there. So we're going to take our slide stop. Go ahead and place it in, but be careful not to get too far down with your slide stop. You don't want to scratch your frame, and we affectionately call that an idiot scratch. And as you can see, there's a little detent right here that you've got to get past. So get right up on it, push, there we go, and we're locked in. 1911s are a little bit different to disassemble, but once you start dis disassembling a couple of them, it doesn't take long to figure it out. Now with a lot of companies you get a nice molded plastic box. With Springfield Armor you get a 
cardboard box with the logo, but when you open it up, uh, you get a really nice usable pouch, and this is something that I would use. Uh, you also get a, your takedown tool and you get your instructions. And in the bottom is a lock. Here with a pouch, really nice double zippers, and you get your handgun, uh, and you get a small pouch inside where you can put two extra magazines. But again, guys, this is something that I use, the plastic box, go into storage. The price on the Springfield Armory Emissary All Black is $1,378. And that's for all their models, uh, whether you get the All Black or you get the two-tone version. 45, 9mm, it doesn't matter. And of course, market price is typically going to be less. To give you a comparison, with the Garrison, we're coming in retail price at $886. Doesn't have all the tri-top finishing, it doesn't have the rail version, it doesn't have a lot of the same things, uh, a lot of the stippling and the grenade pattern on either side. Uh, there's just a lot of extras and it doesn't have the tritium U-notch sights. But this is an excellent semi-basic model for your 1911. With the Emissary, we're getting the tri-cut top. I mean, that is beautiful. It's definitely different. Uh, and again, the serrations that run along the top is just going to keep glare down. You know, sights are beautiful. Uh, the texturing is really big, a big deal. I mean, the grenade pattern on the front and back strap, the G10 scales, high ride beaver tail, incredible trigger, flat face, rail section all the way out to the end, and a full length guide rod with a bull, heavy bull barrel. I mean, there's a lot of things about this handgun that are, again, semi-custom and yet made for combat as a fighting pistol. What are the cons? Maybe a little heavier than your standard 1911. Uh, you know, you've got your basic garrison again, and the price is considerably less. So for a 1911, this is a great option. But if you want to take it a step farther, the Emissary makes a great companion on your hip. When it comes to 1911, Springfield Armory just does an excellent job. And then here with the Emissary, it is, again, one of their most unique 1911 designs. Again, custom features all throughout, and yet this is made as a combat handgun. The forged frame and slide really set this apart. And again, a big thank you to Springfield Armory for sending the Emissary 1911 all black for this review. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Springfield Armory Emissary. 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 He's the Emissary. Springfield Armory, known for their 1911s. Uh, they've been around for a long time. How long have they been around? And then, okay. Yuck, 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 and Mr. Yuck. The Springfield Armory Emissary 1911 in all black. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. I said to check it.